Yeah, it's it's it is a good thing. There's no question about it. And you know the the number will fluctuate. So what is our opinion on the new salary cap? Well, there's not part of part of that is is a funny question is because it's not we don't really have we won't really have an opinion on the salary cap fluctuating because it basically fluctuates because of math. It doesn't fluctuate based on our opinion. You know, so if it if it gets reduced, it's because of the pandemic. If it gets if it gets increased, it's because the global financial situation has improved, or at least for the ones for the Spanish clubs. Um, and part of the reason it does fluctuate ahead of time is because it's based on expected income. So, you know, when often in NBA lingo, in NBA financial lingo, we'll hear things like uh, the proposed cap, the expected cap. It, it will go up in this year. It'll go down in this year. And the part of the reason for that is because it's based on expected income. So, you know, based on your how you're making how much money you're making from TV revenue, your marketing, your match day revenue, which has gone down dramatically, like basically cut in half because everyone is losing their ticket sales. That all factors into this. And also and then and it also takes into consideration other things like your transfer income and what you've been making over the past several years. So that's just kind of math. So our opinion on their decision making on having the salary cap. I agree with you. It's a good thing. And the the way it's brought down is a good thing. I mean, this is part of this stems from an ongoing discussion because American sports have been ahead of this curve for a long time and having a salary cap. It, it introduces parity, but it, it, inclu- it introduces financial health or at least better financial stability. Whereas in football, this is a thing that's very new. It still doesn't exist in the Premier League. Um, it exists in the lower leagues, I believe, but not in the, in the top flight Premier League. Part of that is because teams, bigger teams will push back on that because they don't want to lose their financial muscle that they have over these little teams. Um, But in La Liga, the benefit ultimately is that you want your teams to be financially healthy. And and I think, Diego, the main reason this needs to be put in place is because we just can't trust the brains of the owners and the people running the show, as harsh it is, as that is. Because you just can't... There's too many incompetent people running sports teams around the world, whether you want to look in the NBA. If you're familiar with people like James Dolan and Donald Sterling and... Um, I, I don't know. I'm, I'm blanking on some of them right now. In What's football, the next one called? Is that Dolan? James Dolan, yeah. yeah. In football, you have... And, and, and uh, oh, the Rockets guy... Til- Tillman, Fertitta Tillman or something? I can't remember mm. his actual mm. name. Uh, and then in football, you have ones that hit a little bit closer to home, like Peter Lim, okay? And as much as you love Barcelona, somebody who has now vanished in some ways is Bartomeo, and he's he's been he's had to step down and resign. Mm. Part of the reason you need a salary cap is because football teams, a lot of them are in debt, and the biggest expense that all of these guys have beyond... Anything else is salaries. The salaries are through the roof. Look at Manchester yeah. City's salaries, just absurd. Uh, Barcelona's salary is absurd. And you know what it also prevents? It prevents... Madrid's salary absurd. Madrid's salaries are absurd, but at least a little bit more well thought out and a little bit better calculated. But what I will say that is that I think... They've now taken a number one spot of the highest paying team in Spain. Well, they also have... But they also have the highest salary cap in Spain because... They are a little bit more financially stable. Yeah, they do now. Um, but before the, the pandemic, that was that was Barca. Anyway. Oh well, here I'll, I'm going to send you a little trophy emoji on on WhatsApp. One sec. No, I'm just saying, call out Madrid because you're you're being always quiet about Madrid. Madrid is up there, the highest spending teams. It's call it absurd, Guillaume. I tr- but call, I, I say, trust I trust Florentino's financial resume. I I'll just say that. Um, where was I going with this? Oh. Salary caps, you know what it does? It forces teams to to think a little bit more wisely about who they're giving money to. It prevents something like Alexis Sanchez getting as much money as it did and the teams being um, handcuffed to him and having to move on with him. It's going to be really difficult. It, 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 for, it forces Real Madrid maybe to think twice about giving money to Gareth Bale and then being handcuffed to him. Um, there, I, I gave you a little bit of a Real Madrid dig just so you're happy. Thank you. Um. I know that's hard for you. Yeah, it was just—it was very difficult for me. What else? Um, did we miss anything? There's just this is such a deep, deep one that it's possible that we're missing things that we had thought about talk about beforehand. But 
Is there anything else that you want? Opinions. Yeah, we gave well, our there, opinions. Well, there are several more questions related, relatable, I guess, to this one. Um, yeah. Talk about specific, you know, clubs and cases. So. Yeah. Okay. So we'll move on. All right. Mm-hmm. Next one is from Brennan Powers. For Diego Simeone, 